What's going on everyone? So today's video is going to be a bit different than usual because many of you have been asking me to do a video about my own fitness progress and journey. Not to toot my own horns here, but you may have noticed in the latest videos that I've been working on getting leaner. This leaning down process is something I started last summer and also finished around the summertime and since then I've been roughly maintaining the current shape. But I want to use my fitness process as an example so you can hopefully learn from my experiences and see how I manage a fat loss phase. So in today's video I will discuss how I approached my 4 month cut and how I was able to get these results. And in essence we have two core pillars to my fat loss approach. First we have a calorie deficit created mostly through nutrition and secondly we have lifting weights to help me retain muscle while losing fat. Let's first start with the nutrition side of things because your nutrition is absolutely make or break when it comes to a fat loss process. Of course training helps with fat loss as well but we cannot out train an uncontrolled diet. And if I had to boil down my nutrition into three key variables, it would be focusing on maintaining a calorie deficit, consuming enough daily protein and eating mostly meals that fill me up. The calorie deficit is simply required because the way your body burns fat is that when you consume fewer calories than your body expends in a day, there is an energy gap and this energy gap needs to be compensated for by your body burning body fat. When it comes to protein intake, consuming enough daily protein helps with muscle maintenance while in a fat loss phase. When getting leaner, the goal is not just to lose weight, but we also want to at least maintain muscle while dropping body fat. Next to muscle maintenance benefits, there's also research showing that a high protein diet has direct benefits for your fat loss progress, partially because protein has a higher thermic effect of food. For every 100 calories of protein you consume, your body burns off 20 to 30 calories for digestion. This is significantly more than what gets burned with carbs and fats. And the third variable, which is eating mostly meals that fill me up, is important because we want sustainability in your approach. As you can see in the title of this video, I went through a 4 month fat loss process. That's quite some time, the only way you can pull that off is if you actually have an approach that fits your lifestyle. And like most people, I don't like walking around low energy and hungry. So throughout this fat loss process, I also made sure that I have mostly nutrient dense meals that fill me up. Of course, not every day was perfect and having moments of enjoyment is okay, but most of the time we do want to eat satisfying meals. Now back to maintaining a calorie deficit. There are many ways through which you can create a calorie deficit, whether it's through portion control, intermittent fasting, or even counting calories. I personally went the simple route with my fat loss approach and chose to track my calorie intake. Mostly because it's what I've done in the past and what I'm most comfortable with because I have quite the experience with tracking my calorie intake. Right now, while I am maintaining my progress, I am not tracking my calories and eating mostly intuitively. And I can really notice how my experience in tracking calories is helping me eat intuitively while keeping overall calorie intake in check. Now, back to discussing fat loss calories. Tracking your calorie intake also makes eating at a calorie deficit relatively simple. Say for instance you know that you burn roughly 2700 calories per day, while well, you then just focus on consuming less than 2700 calories and you're in a calorie deficit. But to retain muscle and feel high in energy, we should not decrease our calorie intake too much. A good general aim is to eat at a calorie deficit of 20 to 25%. So if I burn roughly 2700 calories on a daily basis, then eating 2000 to 2100 calories per day is a good target. And these are the calories that I maintained for the first 12 weeks of my fat loss phase, with one exception. At week 9 of the fat loss process, I maintained a one week diet break by eating at around 2500 calories. I can remember that this was a week filled with events and lots of eating out so I just made it easier for myself and gave myself a higher daily calorie intake and then decided to just simply get back on track the week after. After 12 weeks of my fat loss phase I started noticing my fat loss progress slowing down a bit and this is normal. We know from the research that the metabolism is adaptive. As you lose body fat and your body gets accustomed to eating lower calories, your daily energy expenditure will typically drop. So if you continue consuming the same daily calories, then your daily calorie deficit will also reduce. This is why on the last four weeks of my fat loss phase, I decreased my calorie intake to 1900 to 2000 calories per day, a 100 calorie decrease to finish the fat loss phase strong. This calorie control that we discussed just now is the most impactful variable in a fat loss process, for me as well. Because of this calorie management, I was able to create a calorie deficit and my body simply had to burn off body fat. But as mentioned, there's more to leaning down than just eating in a calorie deficit. We also want sufficient protein and satisfying meals. I set my protein intake at a minimum of 125 grams of protein per day. This is roughly 1.6 grams per kilogram of my body weight. 
from research, we know that eating at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight is a good protein aim for muscle stimulation. This relatively high protein intake is beneficial for muscle maintenance, and you will also notice that if you make your meals protein-centered, they are typically quite satisfying, especially in combination with whole grains and vegetables. If I look at the staple meals I use to consume, I typically have three large meals and one to two snacks in a day. For breakfast, I typically had protein oats. This is a mixture of rolled oats, almond milk, a scoop of whey protein, a banana, some blueberries, and a tablespoon of peanut butter. There is nothing magical about this recipe that will make you burn more fat. It's just a mixture of foods that are high in protein and typically filling. For lunch, I typically used to have a rich salad or some wraps that are easy to make or that I can get from outside. When it comes to cooking, I'm quite lazy, especially with my working day sometimes being quite jam-packed and not having enough time to prepare something, then having a salad or a chicken wrap is something you can make on the fly quite easily. And this also tends to be good takeout options if you have a lunch meeting, for instance. In between lunch and dinner, I would typically get a bit of an appetite and this is where a snack like some yogurt with granola would come into play or simply some low-fat yogurt with fruit. I also often like to consume like a chocolate cereal bar that is maybe 120 calories. Not because of its great nutrient density, but simply because I enjoy to have it in the afternoon. It's definitely fine to still incorporate those enjoyment foods into your routine to make the process more sustainable. And lastly, for dinner, it was typically a protein source with some vegetables and whole grains. One of my favorite dinners is to have something like noodles with chicken and vegetables while having low-calorie sweet and sour sauce over it. And that was pretty much my eating routine. As you can see, there definitely is a focus on eating nutrient-dense foods that are filling, but it's also not like I'm having a perfect diet with only foods that are considered to be clean. You can tailor your meals to your preferences. As long as you are in a calorie deficit, consume enough protein and eat meals that satisfy you, there's a lot of flexibility in meal design. Also, the nutrition routine I'll show you now is what I did on most days, but I am human as well, I think. No, I'm just kidding. I'm human as well, so I also had my days in which my calories weren't on point and I didn't reach my protein target, for instance. There definitely were several instances in which I had too much for breakfast and maybe also had some dinners that weren't as nutrient-dense. But keep this in mind for your fat loss phase. How you eat most of the time is more important than how you eat some of the time. If every two weeks you have a moment of increased enjoyment, but those other 13 days you are on top of your game, you will still make great progress. So focus your efforts on consistency over perfection. Making progress definitely still takes work though, and not every day will be easy. But if you master the art of delaying instant gratification and start putting in the work for long-term benefit, great things will happen and your future self will thank you for it. Now, we spend a lot of time discussing nutrition because that's simply a fundamental variable here, but we definitely also want to look into training because we also want to maintain quality muscle size while leaning down. In my process, I had four to five workouts per week. My four staple workouts was that I did upper lower training two times per week. But I also have that fifth day in which I go to the gym to film some content for Instagram and YouTube, and if I have a lot of training clips to film, then that shooting day can feel like a workout in and of itself. For myself though, I personally consider the four-day upper-lower training split as my actual training routine and anything that comes on top of that as something extra that really isn't serious training but more content filming. My four-day upper-lower training split is of course focused on lifting weights while prioritizing compound movements. Think about exercises like back squats, Romanian deadlifts, weighted pull-ups, bench press and the overhead press. It's good to keep in mind that the type of training you did to build muscle is the same type of training that will help you maintain muscle in a fat loss phase. So I essentially continue training with my same usual training split when I transitioned into a calorie deficit. I did not do any high intensity cardio or start training with higher repetitions in my routine. I simply stuck to the training split I had before losing fat as well. A noteworthy training difference while in a calorie deficit is that you might notice your strength development slowing down. Because you are in a deficit, you may sometimes have slightly lower energy levels in training, and that can impact performance. Especially as you get more advanced in your training, you will typically notice some slowing down of strength progress. But as long as you're able to at least maintain strength, you will be in a good spot to maintain muscle. Now, another thing I paid attention to in my fat loss phase is also my spontaneous activity outside of training. From the research, we know that your spontaneous movement can decrease as you maintain a calorie deficit, which can then slow down your fat loss progress over time. So I made it a priority for at least 5 days of the week, I will go outside and have a 30 minute walk. Sometimes this was a morning walk and sometimes I simply walked to a place where I had a work engagement instead of taking the car or public transport. It may seem like a 30 minute walk won't do much, but if we look at the research, then we see that walking regularly is quite impactful. 
In one study, doing about a 25-minute walk on a daily basis helped boost the fat loss progress of the participants by 20%. So don't underestimate the power of walking in your fat loss phase. So that is pretty much how I approached my fat loss phase. As you can see, there are no like secret tricks or detox juices or crazy cardio workouts that I did. Simply sticking to the basics and appreciating the work that is involved in the process. Now, I of course have many years of training experience and a foundation of muscle mass, which definitely helps you look even leaner once you reduce body fat. But the fat loss principles I just described can be applied to most people looking to lose fat. Right now, I'm in a comfortable spot simply eating at maintenance calories and enjoying the process of being consistent in training and eating flexibly. If you currently want to go through a fat loss phase but you are not sure about how to structure your calories, workouts and overall approach, I can help you out. Through my online coaching service, I'm able to coach people from all over the world in their fitness process. Several hundreds of people have been able to transform their health and fitness through my online coaching service. So if you want me to be your coach, visit the link in my description to apply and I'll reach out to you. And that was all for today's video. I hope you were able to get some value and inspiration from me describing my fat loss journey. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then definitely leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And I look forward to seeing you in that next video.